Greetings, Bobby W. Six I W N. I'm out here on a soda summit in a Poda Park, like 8,000 feet or so. I've got this. Uh, I think it's a 79.99 Infed Half Wave off Amazon. It's sold by Guzu. I'm not sure who makes it. If it's JNC or if it's the JPC people, but it's an affordable Infed Half Wave. I'm going to set it up. I'm going to show you how to put it up on a mast. And we're gonna do some sweeps on it, see what the SWR looks like, and then I'm gonna activate and see if this thing isn't a true 40 meter in fed. Very good, so I'll show you everything on the bench. It does come with the case, obviously, and a long section of rope. It does not include the piece for your mask. That is my section. Everything else is included here. So you get the case. There's also some instructions. This is the 150 watt model 40 meter in fed so this one is good from 10 to 40 meters they come in different versions they have the 40 meter in feds and then the 80 meter in feds i believe the 40 meter in feds come with a 49 to 1 transformer and the 80 meters come with a 1 to 64 transformer and obviously a longer wire so this is about 67 feet of wire i think the other one's about like 125 ish give or take so I'm gonna go ahead and set this up for the very first time and show you how I do it and what I'm using for my mast. Okay, here's my mast today. This is my spider beams 12 meter mast. I think it's like 40 something feet or so. What I did is I took an old cutting board and I drilled some holes in it, one big enough where I can double the wire through and then loop it back around itself, the other one so it'll fit over the mast and then keep my wire off the mast some. So since I've never used this wire at all, especially with this mast, I'm gonna go ahead and do this the easy way. I'm gonna lay my mast out fully extended on the ground and then I'm gonna figure out where I need to put this. Typically, when I do in-fed half waves, I don't use a mast this long and I'll go short leg up vertical because I do an inverted L, which you'll see here in a minute, and then long leg out. With this mask, it's gonna be vice versa. It's going to be long leg vertical, short leg out. So I actually have had some good success with that on DX. So it's not my typical configuration, but that's what I'm doing today. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is find the upside of my mast. And I'm gonna fully extend this thing on the ground, but I'm gonna be very careful that I don't screw it up while I do this. Now that I have my mast fully extended, I'm gonna go ahead and pop these zip ties off and uh, hope this guy on the dirt bike I hear doesn't come run over my mast while I have it out like this. I should be good, it's off the side here and we are at the dead end of the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this trash in my pocket. I'm gonna leave my transformer at the top of this bottom section. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run out the wire, hopefully very carefully so I don't get it all tangled up, to the tip of my mast. Okay, now that I found that section, I'm gonna kinda put a little tension on it and pull it tight. Now that I have this end where I like it, this mass is gonna flex. I'm gonna just guesstimate maybe like 16 inches or so below that, and I'm gonna call this uh, the apex point for my wire. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna fold this in half, and then the side that's big enough for my wire, make sure it's got plenty of room. You don't wanna put too much stress on your wire. I'm poking it through like that, then back over this thing and on itself, and then I tighten it. So you can do that. You don't have to slide it all the way down or anything. Boom, so now this will slide over the top of my mast and then I can raise my infed. So now that I have it set up for this mast, I'm very lucky at the top of this mountain there happens to be a post that I can attach my mast to. I did know that before going up here. That's why I came up here. So let's go ahead and uh, show you how to do that next. Okay, now that we're at the post and I have my mast, I'll show you real quick what I mean about the tip. I have this custom tip on my mast so that plastic part will slip here and stop and then it will hold the wire away from my mast. So this is just quick and dirty. This is what I like to do. It's real simple is take a ratchet tie down strap, 
for my mast. So you just got to be careful. You do not tighten it too much or you're going to mess up your mast. So you want it snug and not to fall. And make sure when you tighten it that you're not tightening the metal part to get it, only the strap. Just snug where it won't tip over. And then I just take the bottom of it and wrap it around and make sure that the bottom isn't going to kick out. Okay, now that we've got that attached, you can go ahead and slide that plastic insulator over here so it fits perfect. And then when I, I want to go up with this and give each section a slight twist, but I want to make sure the whole time I'm not twisting my wire around the top. So you got to pay attention as you do this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and tie the rope here to the end of the insulator. I'm just going to do one knot with a slip knot after it. That way I can get it undone when I'm finished operating up here. Okay, let's see if I can do this without getting all the rope tangled up since it's the first time I've unrolled this. And it's... Okay, then I'm going to just take the other end of the rope here and then tie off the other leg of my antenna. And I'm doing an inverted L configuration here. Okay, that should be good. And actually now with the flex on my mast, the transformer, I can actually slide it down. So now it ended up really where I wanted it at the beginning. Very nice. Okay, let me show you the whole setup here. As you can see, it does flex the mast a little bit uh, at the angle I have it because I'm tying off to a low branch over there. But that, that's going to work fine. I have it in the inverted L configuration and then I was able to slide my transformer down a little bit lower here so very nice that's uh how easy it is to set one of these up you could use a tree you can hook it to your house uh, you have a ton of different options you can do these in slopers uh, V you got the inverted L so you can do uh, like a U, there's all kinds of different uh, a half square configuration. I mean, a lot of different configurations you can uh, do with this antenna here. Now that we've got it all set up, let's give it the real test. Let's do some sweeps. Okay, let's do some sweeps starting on 10 meters. This is my very first time. And to show you, I have this RG316 connected over to that antenna for testing purposes. I ha and I have the choke on this end. This is the Chameleon RG316 with the choke. So let's do our first sweep. Bear with me, I am out in the field. If there's glare, that's the best I can do. So as you can see, the auto tuner is off. Nothing is happening here. All right, so far, so good on 10 meters. Looks, uh, Looks pretty good across the band, that's for sure. We'll do one more sweep, just to be sure. Okay, so 10 meters is looking pretty good. Okay, let's check 12 meters now. As you can see, the tuner is still off. All right, very good. 12 meters is looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and do Two sweeps on each band, just to be sure. All right, I am satisfied with the 12 meter band. Let's check 15 meters. All right, very good. 15 meters is looking good. Oh, Ricky just came to say hello. All right, I'm happy with 15. 17 meters. Okay, 17 is still looking operable. Very good, so about, about two-ish or lower on 17. So you can definitely do that with a tuner. Okay, let's do 20 meters. Oh wow, 20 meters is looking super good. 
yeah, 20 meters is pretty much flat across the entire band. Woo, we are definitely successful. I'm actually pretty impressed because I'm gonna show you the bands and the bands aren't really great today. I wasn't hearing people super great, not all of them, but I got 151 on a POTA. So I worked a ton of different bands and pretty impressed. I'd like to see how this thing performs when the bands are doing better, but it's getting cold out here on the desert on the top of the hill and the sun is uh, blinding me in the eyes. So, okay, let's take a closer look at these infed halfways that Guzu Z has on Amazon. I'm not sure if they're made by JPC or JR Radio, but Guzu Z is the same guys that are selling the JPC antennas on Amazon. So these things are starting out at $79.99 for the 150 watt 40 meter version. So they are very affordable. So obviously it comes with this carrying pouch and a length of rope. This is my own attachment, so that it does not come with it. I'm gonna go deploy this here in a minute. So you get the rope, you get the transformer. So it says either 49 to one or one to 64. So I'm assuming you get the 49 to one transformer with the 40 meter in fed halfway and the 64 to one with the uh, 80 meter in fed. Don't quote me, but they have a bunch of different variations. It starts at the 150 watt model, which you're looking at right here. This is the 40 meter in fed. So this will get you 10 through 40 meter coverage, uh, resonant, no tuner. And then they go all the way up to their 80 meter version that is good up to a thousand watts. They also have that in a 40 meter version. So it's gonna have a stronger transformer and some thicker wire. So it's very basic what it comes with. That's all that you need for an infed, a transformer and a wire of the appropriate length. Uh, let's see how this thing tests out in the field when we deploy it and we can do some POTA. It also does come with these instructions here, which are pretty basic and they are in English or Chinese. Uh, it's very simple to get an infed half wave up. I will demonstrate that in the field if I haven't already. Um, there's lots of variations. If you can do in this, you can do a V, you can do an L, you can do a sloper, uh, and, and so on. So there's lots of information on the internet. If you can just get a wire up, it's uh, better than nothing, that's for sure. And this is a multi-band affordable antenna. So I, I am liking it that these are affordable. Uh, it's about the same cost if you were to go buy all the pieces and put it together yourself, possibly cheaper. So it looks like they have it already pre-tuned. Uh, it does have this pretty darn durable insulator on one end uh, that's screwed. It does have a stress relief for the wire, the wire does go through here and hook to the lead. Uh, it looks like they do have a counterpoise lug down here if you're interested in that on your infed. Uh, it does feel pretty durable. Um, I'm tempted to uh, see how this thing does and get it on the air. So I better get outside, get in the car and go activate. Thank you guys for watching. If this is something you are interested in, I will be sure to post links below in the video description. 7-3 and we hope to catch you on the next one.